evening. Good One more time. Good evening. Good evening. I'm New York City Council Member Ben Kalos. You can catch me on social media anytime at Ben Kalos. I have the privilege of representing uh, 168,000 people on the Upper East Side, Roosevelt <laughs> Island, East Harlem, East Midtown, and we all live in a flood zone. Uh, you may have heard about some flooding recently all over our country. We've been very lucky not to have anything in the recent time. But if you uh, are aware, there are a number of people who lost their lives during Florence uh, in the Carolinas just two weeks ago. And uh, to our brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico who are still recovering from Hurricane Maria, which has devastated the island, and we know because of nearly 3,000 fatalities and our thoughts and prayers and actually uh, the commissioner for our OEM, Joseph Esposito, is here. He's here every single year and we're so grateful to have him. Uh, the other thing that I like about seeing him only once a year means that our district is usually in great shape. Uh, so that is a uh, great thing. We do this every year in September. Anyone know why we do it in September? It's hurricane season. It actually starts a little bit earlier, but this is a Emergency Preparedness Month. It is a national event, and uh, we are so very lucky to have our commissioner. Uh, one quick announcement. Uh, we had over 100 RCPs, but tonight we only have about 60 or so people. So at this point, every single person will be getting a go back. Uh, you're going to get to hear from our commissioner. You're going to get to hear uh, from the deputy commissioner as well as our local community emergency response team. Uh, but uh, I want to make sure that he can go sit down with the mayor over at Gracie Mansion, yet another constituent in a flood zone. And uh, if you could join me in welcoming our commissioner for emergency man management, Joseph Esposito. Uh, group 
and we have 28 of them around the country, and we were designated, we sent 100 members down to work in the Carolinas, and then we have the last two weeks, and the last group just came back today. And uh, there was a lot of devastation down there, as the, as the council member said, uh, flash flooding, people would go to bed at night and be dry, wake up in the morning, and their first floor was full of water. So uh, it's important to be prepared, it really is. And we all know that these storms can and do hit New York City. So it's important to be prepared. You know, uh, Sandy came, and uh, a lot of people weren't prepared. We had 40 some odd people who lose their lives during Sandy. The vast majority of those folks, if they would have listened to the evacuation orders and been better prepared, they would have not have lost their lives. So it's very, very important. I want you to take this very, very serious what we're doing here tonight. In addition to weather emergencies, we have no notice events, uh, such as the Chelsea Steam Pipe that exploded over on 23rd Street on, on 5th Avenue. A uh, reminder that things can happen when no one expects them. Uh, you know, weather we sort of get a heads up on. We know when a hurricane is coming, we know when a snow storm is coming, but things like the, uh, uh, the Chelsea Steam Pipe and the Chelsea uh, terrorist attack, they come with no notice. So it's important to have a plan uh, well in advance. Emergency preparedness is not rocket scientists. It really comes down to there you are know, some three basic elements. It's, it's know your zone, if, it's, if you talk about hurricanes, it's have a plan and stay informed. Uh, and again, it's a few easy steps uh, to keep you ahead of the game. Uh, again, now we have uh, people in the back that have, uh, and I see somebody's already reading them, uh, pamphlets on how to make a plan specific for your family, very, very important. And uh, we're going to talk you through that later on uh, during the presentation. Uh, also, please sign up to notify NYC. This is a program where you'll get notified uh, by either you go to nyc.gov or call 311 and you can follow us on Twitter. It gives you citywide information, current information on what's going on in the city, as well as information specific to your neighborhood, areas that you want to get information on, or other areas maybe where a relative or a friend lives. You can punch in other neighborhoods also and find out what's happening. It could be something as simple as uh, a train delay, uh, a water main break, power outage, all the information what's going on in, in that area of your concern. So really, no one should leave here without signing up for the notify NYC, and we'll go through that a little later also, I think. Uh, everyone has, uh, you know, all of us will have some type of, of special considerations. Uh, if you have mobility issues, if you take medication, uh, you take care of maybe an elderly or a sick relative or neighbor, or you have young children, you have to make sure you have planned in advance so that you can meet these challenges. Very, very important that we talk about a plan in advance. You want to be able to say, when an incident happens, you want to be able to say, I know what to do, not what do I do. Very important. If you listen to this presentation and make some plans, you will know what to do in an emergency. Preparedness starts with all of you, but New York City Emergency Management, our partners with the PD and the FD, other city agencies, and your local elected officials, like, like this dedicated gentleman just did, we stand ready to assist you and make sure you have the resources you need. Uh, now, I'm going to introduce our Deputy Commissioner of External Affairs, Christina Farrell. She's going to give you a brief presentation. Are you going to show the, the videos? The, the, the videos? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No? Okay. She'll give you a brief presentation, then we'll take some questions, and we'll follow it up by distributing the go bags. And again, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank the Rockefeller University, but especially I want to thank your council member, because he made this event possible by donating some of his uh, discretionary funds to get these bags out to you folks. So you have a dedicated uh, leader right here. So again, that's it. I want to thank the uh, commissioner for coming out. He's here year in, year out, and we're so grateful for his leadership. He has a city of 2.6 million, and he every time there's an emergency in the city, his office is involved. So just if you can thank him for his dedication, this is a 24/7 job. I want to take a moment to also thank Rockefeller University. Uh, all the CERT volunteers from all the four CERTs that I have in my district. Uh, this started when uh, the Roosevelt Island CERT team reached out and said, could we combine this and use this as a recruiting opportunity? And this is our first time doing it here with ESNA CERT. And I also want to thank, uh, in particular, the East 60th Neighborhood Association. We have uh, Judy Schneider here this evening. And neighborhood can just be a, a community when you're in a city as big as this, what makes neighborhoods small and great 
are in the neighborhood association. So if you're not a member of the East 60 Neighborhood Association, please consider joining. And I just want to thank them for uh, their uh, co-sponsorship for this event. This event has also been co-sponsored by, I think, every elected official on the East side. Uh, so just thank you to everyone who helped get the uh, word out. And now, without further ado, back to Deputy Commissioner Christina Farrell. Thank you. I'm not that tall. I'm not that tall, so I'm going to put that down for a minute so I can see everybody. Uh, so thank you for coming out, and thank you for listening. Um, I think I'm between you and your go-back. Uh, so I'm going to go through the slides. A lot of the materials, like the commissioner and the councilman said, are in the brochures and the guides that we gave you. But we just wanted to go through things a little bit, um, and then answer a few questions and take it from there. Uh, so just a word about emergency management. I don't know if everyone is familiar with our department. We are headquartered in Brooklyn. That's a picture of our building uh, right by the Brooklyn Bridge. And uh, we were started in 1996 as part of the mayor's office. We became an independent agency after a charter, uh, a um, city charter revision vote in 2001. Uh, so we've been a full-blown agency since 2002. Uh, and we really do three things, or four things. We um, help people prepare, like we're doing tonight, like Sir and my division do continuously. We write plans with all kinds of partners, with private sector partners, with other agencies on all different government levels, nonprofits, elected officials, so the city um, you know, knows, has a guidepost of what to do during emergencies. And we work to get um, emergency messaging out to people on all different levels. We do messaging with uh, businesses, we do messaging with elected officials, and as the commissioner said, we do notify NYC, which hopefully you are all familiar with or you will look into this evening. We're about 240 people, which is really huge for emergency management, clearly in a city like New York, and some of the operational agencies we work with were pretty small, um, but you know, I think we get the job done. Uh, so, this is the main reason we're here tonight, to talk about um, personal preparedness, uh, family preparedness. These are really our uh, three steps that we encourage people to do. One is to make a plan. Uh, I know the CERT volunteers, when you were coming in, were talking about it. If you picked up the guide that says, my emergency plan on the front, um, that really is a plan waiting to happen. You can go through that uh, with your loved ones or your family or your friends, and you can write, if you go through and fill it out, you can also fill it in online or on our app, um, and that'll help guide you through what an emergency plan is. Do I live in an evacuation zone? Do I have special needs? Uh, what, what are my transportation options if public transportation is down, which we've seen happen several times over the last few years? Uh, so that'll really walk you through steps, maybe some things you haven't thought of, um, and if you have uh, people that you care for or um, people that you can help once you put your plan in place, it's always a good idea to reach out and see if you can help them. Uh, once you have your plan in place, basically when an emergency happens, there are two things that uh, emergency officials are going to advise that you do. They're either going to tell you to evacuate or they're going to tell you to shelter in place. Um, for both of those, you want to gather supplies. If you're going to evacuate, as um, we've noted, this area is in a coastal storm zone, uh, so we could have a mandatory evacuation the next time a hurricane comes. Um, we encourage people to make a plan to go to family or friends. The good news, we're not Houston, we're not Miami or New Orleans, you don't have to travel 90 miles. Here, you don't even have to try uh, travel a mile. You, um, you know, if, if you have uh, friends that live a few blocks west of here, they're out of the evacuation zone. Um, so finding, uh, you know, we can help you, there are maps up there, or you can go to nyc.gov slash knowyourzone and see which zone you're in. If you start with one, that's the most likely to evacuate, all the way up to six, which is uh, less likely, but still something to be taken seriously. Uh, so when you evacuate, we encourage people to gather some supplies, you're well on your way, because you're all going to receive a go bag tonight. You might want to put in some personal items, an extra pair of reading glasses, copy of your prescription, um, you know, if you have special dietary needs, those kind of things. But you also want to have some supplies ready at your house, or your apartment. Um, you know, sometimes you see guidance from the federal government or others to have a gallon of water per person per day. 
that may not be realistic uh, if you're living in a studio apartment or a one bedroom. You know, these plans should be customized. You should do what works for you. But as we've seen, um, you know, a lot of Manhattan just south of here was not ordered to evacuate during Sandy, but they lost power for several days. You know, they may have been living on a higher floor of a building, um, they may have had people with special needs, had children, pets, so you want to gather some supplies. If there's a power outage, um, if your heat goes out, you probably don't want to be um, rummaging around your house trying to find, you know, things that you might be able to use since uh, the power is out or since, um, you know, the stores aren't open, those kind of things. Then the last thing that we encourage people to do is to stay informed. We feel Notify NYC is the best way to do that. We can tell you more about that out there. But you can sign up. Everyone signs up for citywide events and for major events. So if there's a coastal storm evacuation or something, some of the flooding yesterday um, went out through Notify. But also if there's an issue on the FDR, uh, there are a lot of closings now with the new and General Assembly in town, which may be affecting you. Um, those go out through Notify. If there's a um, unplanned road closure, if there's a school evacuation, and you can sign up for up to five locations. So uh, where your kids go to school, where you work, where your grandmother lives, um, or you can go on the app or Twitter and see everything that's happening all over the city all the time. Uh, so this is a little more about what I just mentioned, um, you know, the different parts of, of your plan and the different steps that you want to take. Um, and this is uh, the go back. And you know, really the important thing is to take the bag tonight, to go home, to think about what you would need. Um, copies of your insurance, of your passport or your license, documents like that. So if you do, if you're not able to go to family and friends, uh, the city will definitely open shelters. These are usually in public schools. Um, so they're safe, they're clean, they're well supplied. They could be two, three, four hundred people sleeping in a gym, you know, eating in a cafeteria, so probably not the most comfortable place you've ever been. Um, so, you know, you really want to think about are there alternatives, but if uh, you do need to go to a city shelter, the shelters are there and they'll be ready for you. Uh, so these are some of our other guides and some of our other programs. Um, like the commissioner said, if you're not uh, internet or social media savvy, you can always call 311 and they have all our information. They can send it to you or to your civic association or whatever group you're interested in. Um, we do put a lot of information out on social media. Um, we also do a lot of uh, press releases. Your um, councilman gets that and I'm sure that he forwards a lot of that information to you. And then if you do head up, um, if you're part of a religious organization, a block association, you're active in your children's school, and you want us to come to talk. We have customized uh, programs that can come to talk about kids, uh, seniors, different programs, so we can give you more information about that. Uh, and these are some of our programs. Ready New York is the overall preparedness. CERT is what we've mentioned. Partners in Preparedness is for the private sector, and that's a program we run where businesses can work to take some pretty attainable steps. Uh, and then they're certified by us that um, they are a partner in preparedness and that they're working for their employees. Um, so that is it in a nutshell. Um, I don't know if Sir uh, is going to come uh, talk a little bit more about Sir, and then uh, then we can answer any questions. Uh, 
but I do appreciate the training and the effort that we get. As a certain number, we have two primary responsibilities. One is events like this where we're reaching out to our fellow neighbors. We are all, all of us are members, are community-based. We are, we're a member of the team in which we either work in that neighborhood and or live in that neighborhood. And as we have told, we get paid a lot, nothing. Uh, we are volunteers. We are here to help educate all of you in events like tonight to try to make you prepared in case of an event. Hopefully nothing ever happens, but we know we've had hurricanes. We had, in this neighborhood, we've had two, train, two crane collapses, the Coral Isle uh, plane crash. Uh, we've had another other events that have happened in the greater New York uh, Manhattan area. We respond to those kinds of things. Um, but I'll stay with the first thing. We go out to events to educate you, Ready New York, um, Kids Ready New York, uh, street fairs so that you can try to make sure that you're ready in case of emergency. Uh, it was just discussed whether you shelter in place or whether you have a go bag. That's my response bag. I also have a go bag in my office. All right, I've been doing this for 15 years. I'm probably a little on the radical side. Uh, I also have a bag at home in which I have. If somebody gets a knock on your door, get out. And that's the idea of the go bag. You do always get advance notice that you need to go. So the idea is that you've prepared in advance. And if you're prepared, you're going to feel a lot better about leaving. You know that you've grabbed on something and you have what you need in there to leave. So the bag, the bag you get is a good start. The personalize it. What's important to you if you are not going to be home in an hour from now? So I have a little cash in there because we may, you know, in the panic, in the rush to run out of your house, you may forget your wallet. Now you don't have any cash. What are you going to do? So I keep a little extra cash in it. In the days when we had uh, pay phones, I even had a roll of quarters. Today, I don't know if you can find a pay phone. Um, if you have prescriptions for medication, have your prescriptions in there. Photocopies of your important IDs, so that if you forgot your wallet again or your purse, you have your IDs, your driver's license, and things that are important to you for identify who you are so that you can kind of maintain a normal life if you're out of your uh, residence for a period of time. Um, small change of clothes, underwear, socks, things like that. If you're in a shelter for several days uh, and you walk down and what you're wearing, there are a couple of days you're going to kind of wish you could grab something a little extra. You know, outer clothes can get dirty. Inner clothes goes a long way. Uh, we try to make and we do man, CERT does man the shelters, all the hurricane evacuation centers and the shelters. We're there 24 hours a day until the, uh, from the beginning of the opening to the closing of the shelter. Uh, we try to make it as accommodating for you as possible, but it is mass housing. Uh, there are cots. It is not uh, the Ritz. It's not what you want, you know. You're sharing a large room with a large number of people. So bring what you can. Even a deck of cards to entertain yourself. Something. So each one of you should personalize your, your bag that you leave you with today. And also prepare what case you're told. Stay home. Not every event you can have a bag and leave. Make sure you have things at home that uh, allow you to shelter in place. Always keep a couple cans of uh, canned food in the back of the uh, cabinet. You lose power, things in the refrigerator are going to go. And if you have some canned food, you're going to have something you can eat. Don't run out and go, oh, I'll fix it, and then something happens, you know, I'll buy some new stuff, and something happens, and you're stuck. So, you know, I always keep, that's my emergency buy, I'll eat it, I, you know, buy some new stuff, eat the old stuff, so when I do need it, I don't look at the expiration of the cake and go, uh, you know, too late. Uh, you know, because an ambulance might not be able to get to me. Um, so, you know, make sure that you have what you need. Water, if, if they're saying, we're going to have a powder outage, we're going to lose water. Fill your tub, fill containers, fill your, uh, you know, your spaghetti pot. Put the water in there before the power goes out, the water goes out. So you can, you may, you can have some water. Flush your toilets, wash yourself up, cook a meal if you still think you can still do that. Uh, things like that. So the things you can do that will lower your anxiety, even if you're either told to stay there or to get out, so that you're, sorry, you're calmer, you're more relaxed, you're not panicking, trying to remember what to do. 
Or it's time to try to think about what you have to do is when it happens. So prepare in advance, follow the recommendations for a start, and then just add on the personal things that you need in there. Uh, that goes a long way in making you more comfortable, your friends and your family more comfortable. So if you're not prepared, your friends and family are going to worry about you also. Right? So we as CERT members make sure that our families and friends are taken care of, especially our families. I have a 12-year-old that lives in the Upper East Side. She knows what to do, she's prepared, where to go, um, including if we can't go home, where I will meet her, if the cell phone service is not working, where do I meet her? Uh, you know, oh my gosh, where's my daughter? Uh, she knows that if, it, you know, if we can't get to the house, we have a designated uh, first point. If that's not available, in a slightly wider circle, we have a second one. And a little further away from the home, we have a third one. So that we know, I know, she knows where to meet me in case our home is not available. Also, a recommendation 9-11, calling around the city was very tough, but you could get a long distance circuit because everybody was calling their friends a block away around the city. Take somebody, call my, my, you know, my sister Sally in Boston. My family knows to call her so that we can leave a message as a message for you. We're okay. And then, you know, oh yes, I heard from uh, your wife and my daughter, they're okay, and they'll meet you at. So that you have alternate plans. Um, we do. Do you want to know what we got back? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we do unplanned emergencies. We call it unplanned. Hurricanes are coming up. We know they're coming. CERT runs a lot of the evacuation centers. We do respond to floods and check for, for flooding during snowstorms and blizzards. We check hydrants, things of that nature. So that we are, we are we, those events we know in advance. We can schedule them now. We know who's going to respond to those things. And we do also respond to the unplanned events, uh, as I described. Uh, the crane collapses, the steam explosions. We run a lot of reception centers. We've been to all, of the, all of the gas explosions that have happened over the last five, six years in New York City. Uh, we responded, and more and more, we had this certain, the response by the city has been, uh, it's gotten more robust. It used to be a couple days, and now the reception centers have been open for weeks, and CERT and other agencies, we're not the only ones there, we'll take credit. Uh, a lot of agencies are there to help the residents that have been displaced by the disaster that's there, and that's what we're part of. Uh, such as greeting you here, directing you. Um, at a hurricane shelter, we'll run the reception, we'll help run the center. Uh, we also do it in conjunction with the Red Cross. Red Cross, by charter, can't run uh, animals. We'll help, we can help with the animals. So, in a shelter, you can bring animals if you have pets, and we'll run the pet. Uh, we have a room set, set aside, water, somebody to watch it, and things of that nature. I was told five minutes, so I've kind of prepared five minutes. Any questions? Let's go. I have a question. I'm a sir, and yeah. I would like you to ask, uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, possibly become a sir, get the train. Good question. Um, at the desk up there, if you can let or any one of us in a green shirt, uh, let us know that you are interested in being a member. We do typically meet about once a month. Uh, we take the summer off when we're all on holiday and going up and doing things, but we meet approximately once a month and we try to discuss the latest what's going on, to refresh our training, to pair our members, talk about what's going on. Uh, NISON does a lot of training with us. We are trained by when we initially take the training. We take a 13-week uh, training now, it's been 15. We train for about 30 hours. We get, so we get trained in like, search and rescue, medical, uh, traffic, uh, crowd control, um, number of events, uh, all about the city, about the subways, all the various infrastructure we have in the city, so that we can help first responders in the city and yourselves if needed. Uh, so if you like, you're interested in doing something like that, see one of us, we can sign up at the desk out front. Yes.
Yes. Are there batteries that last longer? Like I said with the food, what I would recommend you do, if you use batteries for different things in your house, periodically go through your go bag, pull those out, use those, put fresh batteries in your bag, just like I mentioned with the food. Uh, don't wait until you need to find out it's past the expiration date. Rotate it uh, as part of your stock. Put fresh stuff as your reserve, use that. So the same thing with batteries. Uh, and if you do, if medication is important to you and you put any medication in your bag, use that medication when it starts to reach the end and put fresh medication back in your bag. Could you tell us again how you know our zone? Uh, no zone, there is a map out front and there is on the OEM website, there is a know your zone uh, app that we'll, you can pull up. service. 
I, I'm interested in working with you and enabling you to spend hours and hours of your life fighting this fight. <laughs> that being said, I just learned something new. I didn't know that OEM could bring in portable cell towers, so that's pretty cool. So thank you, great, great question. But, but uh, as she said, um, have an old princess hall. So most of us today have home phones that are plugged in. Uh, so you're most likely going to have to lose power. That phone's not going to work. A princess home or cell phone power if you have power. Well, then, right. One of the reasons for my question is, is that there is copper in my building. Yes. That's why when I went to go, well, it's the only option they gave me for two different cable companies is DOIP, which means that the cable modem has to have power to work yep. for a princess home to work on yep. home phones. And you need to get copper in your building. It's so important that you uh, connect it to fiber industry. Yeah, so it's so you're you're a Verizon building? Uh, we have uh, Verizon, RCN, and uh, sure. Time Warner. We we've got these calls from other constituents. We're happy to work with you to file uh, the Public Service Commission. Ultimately, my hope is that if enough people complain, maybe they'll change their mind. But currently, the the Public Service Commission has given permission to these utilities to no longer offer phone service. And uh, it's, it is something that I'm willing to fight alongside you if you are interested. Uh, and ultimately, you can work around this. We'll work with you, your utility, and the Public Service Commission to make sure that they give you a battery backup so that even if something goes wrong, you'll still have access to phone service if you're plugged into that mode. Uh, I just want to emphasize one of your points before, just not, not on telephones, but on, uh, on preparation. So, you, uh, of course, you're about you know, the emergency plan that, that you're going to fill out, hopefully all of you, starting tonight. But they have these little small ones here, which has a tear off in the back, okay? And this is good to put in, if you have children, or, uh, to put in their backpacks, because even when they're at school or with a caregiver or something like that, if you're disconnected and you need to get in touch, having that information there with the caregiver or with the child, even if they're at school, that will be helpful. And so you can talk to Aunt Sally in Boston, but at least some of that stuff, just a small part, is written down so they can get in touch with you and you can get in touch with them. So I have a question. Any other questions? Yes. Radios, 
uh, which most people, maybe some surf members, uh, but most people don't, you know, have, have radios that they're skilled in using. Um, so that's why you have to have multiple plans uh, and ways. I mean, hopefully some, some type of um, emergency messaging will get through. Uh, if people have got wireless emergency alerts, I know I didn't get it yesterday, but I heard some were sent out for the flooding. Those are alerts that you didn't sign up for, but your phone starts buzzing and going off. Um, you know, we do that, but also the federal government and others do. So, I mean, every as technology comes, there are positives, there are challenges, um, but there are more ways to become informed. Um, you know, the real challenge is, is um, for no notice events. You know, if there were uh, some type of steam pipe explosion up here or uh, an improvised explosive device the way that uh, there was down in Chelsea a couple of years ago for hurricanes, and especially by nature of the fact that you all came and chose to spend your night here, I would be willing to wager that you're um, keyed in through your neighborhood association or through your councilman or through something. You obviously have many neighbors. Uh, not obviously, but you probably have many neighbors that are not, um, and that's you know who we're trying to talk to bit by bit. Um, so it's great that there are all these different facets, and I mean, anytime there is a new, um, we've been talking with different providers about the fire alarm boxes and how um, those can be updated and, and can be sending out information. So I mean, we never say no when someone comes and says, um, you know, we can fly things off of a blimp or we can pamphlet at this, we can do this. I mean, we're not going to say no because we want the message to get out and meet people. Um, but, you know, you have to have many different ways to do that because ways are, things are going to fail at some point. Again, optic, can I ask, there was just, I don't understand the difference between fiber optic and the copper. And what is, what, why is it fiber optic not, not as good? So, if you have specific questions about phone service, we will uh, make sure to stop by our table. We will connect you with the Public Service Commission. We, I see one last, I see two last hands, and then after that, uh, we will we'll cut questions and then move on to the main event. So, you have a person right here up front and somebody in the back. Hi. Oh, um, during Sandy, we used the water from the hydrant outside. Um, will they still be working? Um, so the city has a, a very uh, robust water. You know, we get um, water from different reservoirs and everything, and um, it, it's tested and, and all of that. Um, you know, depending on uh, what the emergency is, sometimes water may not be safe, or there may be a, um, a boil alert. You know, things will happen, but that's why it's so important because I, you know, we, we can't foresee every eventuality that will come here. Um, you know, during we tested water uh, down with the steam pipe explosion. Um, there have been incidents in other parts of the city where the water was brown when it came out. And you tell people to run it. You know, I personally am not going to give my kids water if it started out brown coming out of my um, faucet. So, so the important thing is to have have your messaging plan in place. Be signed up for Notify. Have a, a trusted partner. My next door neighbors are in their 70s and 80s from Italy. They listen to Italian radio. If there's something going on, they know to call me and my husband. They're not signing up for Notify. They're just not. But you know, they live next to me, so I'll stop by and we'll we'll talk through you know what their plans are if they should go to their daughters in New Jersey. So really, the the overall message here is that. You have to be keyed in. You have to um, understand where the message is coming from, and have some emergency plans for any eventuality. For uh, Sandy, we had no water, so we filled the tub for cleaning, you know, cleaning and toilet. But we uh, were very lucky to have gas. So, so you live in a high-rise building? Oh, we're in uh, zone five or six. No, you live in a high-rise building. Yes. After Sandy, New York City Council passed uh, a resolution that all buildings that are high rise, so if you live in a walk up building, street pressure will push the water into the top floor. High rise buildings, it's required, the building required to have a pump. It either pumps the water up to all of the apartments directly or feeds the roof tank on your roof. There's now requirements of all buildings, by 2019. We're required to put in an outlet for you to be able to go into a public accessible area of the building and fill up so you don't have to go out to the street item. So any high-rise building should be having a place within the building that you can refill the water containers so if you don't have to go out and get your water from the 
and that's effective, I forget the date, 2019. Last question. I just wanted to know if any hams in this building. <laughs> We, we had, had so many questions about uh, the phone lines, and I've also been a copper fan uh, back to 2011, uh, back to 9-11, um, when my neighbor girl had two parents in the town and had a cell phone. Um, so uh, any hams in here? I mean, is Sir teaching ham? The old-fashioned ham radio? Soon. Um, so we do, CERT does do different radio training. Um, we don't, CERT is not specifically a ham program, but we do have members um, that are involved. There's a Rockaway contingency <coughs> that is very involved in ham radios, and so I think that there are some groups that do do some ham radio and other things. Um, as Jay said, they have their own meetings. They're um, kind of chartered by us, but we don't run the operations every day. So uh, it really depends on the team and on the individual skills and interests of each team. But I'm sure these guys can talk to you a little bit more after about what their team makeup is and what they're interested in. So we will have people from emergency management here who can answer any questions. So there's over 60 of you here today. Everyone is going to get the, one of these go-backs. So every year we do this, every year everyone runs for the door. And everyone stands there for 40 minutes really angry that they have to wait in line. So what we're going to ask is if you have had any mobility impairment, uh, or if you have kids or what have you, if you can start making your way back. And we've got the search team, they're just here to ask you to just stay seated because it's a lot more comfortable just to relax. If, for, if you have an emergency, you just want to leave without the go back, that's fine. But we're going to be asking folks to come up row by row. So we're going to ask the, the first row if you can start leaping your way up as well as uh, the second row. And then uh, Jesse, my chief of staff, is going to come in and call people. And I'll be meeting folks out there with the go-backs. Thank you.